Okay, seven o'clock on uh, my account, on my uh, clock here. Um, we have uh, this. I'll call the meeting to order. This is the Hadley Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, this is a continuation of um, some hearings that were scheduled for last week. Uh, we have uh, Board Member Linda Laduke. Linda, Linda, are you here? Yes, I am. And um, I think uh, John and Elaine. I think that's John Kukowski, right? Good, good guess. Okay, perfect. Um, so we will, um, we'll get started with, uh, I'll just go, I'll go in the, with the order that they were in uh, previously. We'll start with uh, 234. This is a uh, 234 River Drive. This is a request for a variance from the provisions of section 3.1 um, for the property situated on the westerly side of 234 River Drive. Um, there, Applicant is requesting formal approval of a second building claimed as existing since 2010 as a third dwelling unit. Oh, um, it does, we have, uh, it doesn't even look like we have any members of the public, but uh, what, what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll have Attorney Reedy present, uh, present and then, um, then, the board, then the board will ask questions and then we'll open it up to the public. We'll ask the public to limit their comments to, uh, to five minutes or less. And then, um, and then we can ask any follow-ups after the public comments, and then uh, we have a motion and uh, and a vote. We'll we'll put it to a vote. So, um, Attorney Reedy, uh, are you prepared to to present? I am. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. For the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst, here on behalf of North Hadley Properties, and its petition for a variance. Uh, I, I want to thank the the board and and the chairman for continuing this. I was away last Monday. So I, I really appreciate uh, rescheduling to this evening. I hope to keep it simple on, on both of these. Um, and so as, as the chairman noted, is as hopefully the board saw in their packet, this is uh, 234 River Drive. Um, there are, there's an existing, uh, two existing buildings. One of them is a garage. That's not part of this. It's, it's the existing longer building um, in 2008, it got a special permit to be a, a two unit. And then in 2010, it got a building permit, electrical permit for a three family. It just has never been formalized. So effectively what we're trying to do is to formalize that this evening, the, the building commissioner had said, hey, you've got to go through this process. So that's the process that we're going through. Uh, it's existed as such since 2010. Um, I'm happy to show you a map or any of the, the plans that we have, but understanding that, you know, you're all Hadley residents and probably very familiar with what we're talking about, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions or, or to get into a deeper presentation if you'd like. So, so the property was, um, was, a, was a two family until, until roughly 2010, that the, the work was done in 2010 to, to yes. add the extra unit? Correct. Yes. Yeah, and there's a, you should have in your packet uh, an electrical permit from, I think, uh, June 22nd of 2010. <clears throat> I do. Well, I, don't, I don't know if that packet got uh, distributed. Uh, I can, I can, sh I can share it if you, if you want. Sure, yeah, that, that, might, that might be helpful. Okay, let me just minimize because I didn't know which one you were going to take. So let me minimize those. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, if I'll scroll up, I don't know if everybody can see my screen, at least a portion of it. And so behind it, just for orientation, 234 River Drive right here, if I were to click on it, you'd be able to see exactly what we're, what we're talking about here. It's in this building. I've got this being the application, make it a little larger. There's that application for the electrical work in 2010 for the apartment alterations. And then this is effectively the floor plan, a couple of units, and then you've got that unit three on that next floor. GIS map just showing, which is probably better seen through that uh, Google street view and then just one of Randy Eiser's fabulous plans, uh, mortgage plot plan. So that's what we've got here. No great shakes here, frankly. No, nothing's nothing's changing. We've got sign-offs from uh, I think the electrical department and the fire department 
for this being a, a three unit, we're just really looking to formalize it through zoning and this is the appropriate channel to, to do that through. I don't have, I don't have a I don't have a particular problem with it. I I um I actually knew someone that lived here in, in around the 2010 um, time period. So I mean I I'm aware that there was three units here. Um, I, you know I've been in I've been in one of the units or or maybe even two of them. Um, I my only question is whether it's definitely um is 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 if it is definitely the route to to do a variance. Uh, but there's, if the, there's no neighbors here challenging it, but that's my only question is whether the variance is actually the correct tool or if it is a finding that it's been in existence for more than 10 years or, or what kind of what the, um, I mean, obviously we can make that finding as part of the, the variance, but um, I, I just have a question on whether it's actually. Yeah, and if I could, Mr. Chair, so I, I think this is the appropriate route. So typically when we're talking about 10 years, I think that's 40A section seven. That, that we deal with. And that's typically for single or two family dwellings. Okay. And if those have existed for 10 years, they get that grandfathering protection. So I think when we're talking about a three family, it just doesn't extend that far. Practically speaking, I think, you know, they, it has existed and it's, and so I think it was the discussion that this is the appropriate route okay. to do it. John or uh, Linda, do you, do you guys have any questions? Uh, just a comment. I mean, uh, I'm familiar with the, uh, uh, you know, where the property is and, and what it is. And uh, I don't, uh, I mean, there's never been any problems with, uh, with tenants there or, or anything else. So I, I you know, uh, as long as the uh, uh, fire department, uh, electrical inspector uh, and plumbing is, is satisfied, then uh, I don't have a problem with it. I don't either. I don't have any questions. Um, are there are there any um, any members of the public that that uh, on the call that would like to speak to this? Want to say anything? We really don't have anything to add, but um, you know we did change it over in two thousand and ten um, and. You know, it's, it's been like that and it's it's always been a two family home prior to that. So it's been through probably two or three reevaluations mm -hmm. with the town looking at it and taxing us for mm -hmm. that since then also. Mm -hmm. so. For the third for the third unit? Yes. Yes. Is it the third unit is that where the old where the where the shop was? Where the store was. Sure, yeah. So if mm -hmm. this doesn't remain a residential studio apartment, it would revert back to commercial, which would require a lot more people parking, coming in and out, which uh, wouldn't make any sense. I agree. Um, Attorney Reedy, have you heard anything from any, any neighbors for or against this? Nothing. So we're going to leave it as a variance, then, Andrew. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave we'll leave it as a variance. Well, I make a motion we grant the variance. Second. Um, uh, we we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Linda. Aye. Yes. John. Yes. And I'm a yes too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> on to the next one. The next one is uh, also on River Drive, 223 River Drive, request for a variance from the provisions of sections 6.22 and 5.1 um, of the Hadley's Only Bylaw by Green Tree Family Limited Partnership uh, property located at 223 River Drive. Applicant wants to continue past non-conforming use as apartment for no more than two people. So uh, again, for the record, good evening, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst here on behalf of the Green Tree uh, Family Limited Partnership, owners of 223 River Drive. What I've got up on the screen is 223 River Drive. I will also, if my computer allows me, let me see if I can get some photos up. So this one, uh, it's essentially a, a, a the carriage house 
back here. This is zoned limited business. Um, it's the carriage house. It's been utilized as a um, as an apartment since I think 1996. Uh, and again, this is one of those things where the, the building commissioner um, came in and said, okay, you know, we have to formalize this and, and because it's in the, the limited business and they're not connected. They thought that the variance was the right way to go. And so uh, here we are requesting a variance. And let me see if I can, if I stop that share, I can probably show some photos of it. So there's one of the photos right there. And for some reason, it's not just making it simple on me. And then this is, hopefully I didn't just show that one. So that's one of the other photos that we've got there. And I also have the floor plan. Let's see if I can. Tells me I'm gonna share four. This is the first time I'm doing it this way, so you have to maybe be patient with me. I don't know if you're able to see the floor plan. Where you're still seeing uh I can, I can, we can see the floor plan. Okay. Okay. We received a copy of that. Oh good. Yeah, sorry. For some reason it's not giving me the whole screen to share, so I'm not sure exactly what everybody's seeing. Um, but that's so that's the floor plan. It, it really is just a variance to allow. <laughs> Uh, this to continue to exist as an apartment. So I, I had a question on on uh, this one on in with a kind of the same in the same like vein as my variance question on the last yeah. one. Um, I, understanding that the that the construction aspect is is part of that ten year that ten year uh, look back period. Does that tenure look back period apply to a non to a I guess a legal use of a of a structure? No, I don't. It doesn't render an a an uh, illegal use lawful. It, the construction is okay, so you can't take the building down. And it's typically I I know and you know while I've got you, I'm I'm gonna look up 40A section 11 just to make uh, section seven rather just to make sure I'm not talking out of school with one of these things. I, I looked at it uh, the last couple of days and my, yeah. basically my question was, my question is sort of, and, and we actually have a, a feeler out to town council on this just for, for, so that I would be able to, we have a better handle on it going forward. But, you know, it's clear that, that the building commissioner, the, the zoning enforcement officer af after 10 years can't come and ask you to take down a building that you built. Right. Um, and then there's something about six years if it's actually built pursuant to a building permit that, Correct. that uh, and, but, it sort of was unclear to me on like in this situation the the carriage house was is not a non-conforming structure itself right it's a non-conforming right. use because it's not supposed to be used as a um as an as a dwelling you got you've got it that precisely it so it would be like if that if it was let's say violative of the setback um and then after six years if it was if it was built in accordance with a valid building permit or 10 years if it was just built and then nobody said anything for the 10 years, the structure would be grandfathered, but I don't know that it does anything for the use of that structure. And I think, you know, maybe the best bet would be for the town to issue a variance for this. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll because I don't know why the building inspector would have had us go through that route. I wanna say I did look at it and confirm that this was the right route to go through because if, if we could have just done a section six finding, you know, uh, not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing, we would have preferred that because I like that route better than a variance. Sure. Um, I just don't frankly recall exactly how I got to, to this besides this was the route suggested by uh, Mr. Quinlan and, and we looked at it and thought that he was right in asking. And so that's the process we're going through. And again, if, if there were neighbors here, maybe a different story um, but obviously, and I haven't heard anything here. Um, I think from everything that, so Joel Greenbaum's on with me as well. Everything that Joel has said is that they've, you know, he hasn't heard, there haven't been any issues with this, with this property. 
Now that was originally uh, a garage and office. And so I guess my, my only question is, is there sewers for the both the main house and that building? Joel, do you know the answer to that? Is that yes, there is? I think you're still muted, Joel. It doesn't matter because I saw your head nod, but. There's sewers for both buildings. Town sewer. Yes. Okay. And um, so that's, you know, my concern would be if there was the main structure and then this one uh, on a uh, septic tank or whatever, being that close to the, the pond, that's the only thing. But if it's, if it's on sewer, then that's, that's a mute point. I don't have any questions. Um, does Mr. Does, who owns the property right now? So Green Tree Family Limited Partnership does, and and Joel, are you you're a limited partner for that? I am. It's me, my two sisters, and my mom is the general partner. Was there ever a uh, a uh, number of inhabitants that was put on that portion I, of the uh, property? I don't believe so, Joel. No, sir. Oh, okay. So I mean, so one, so um, so again, I I don't um, I'm not I'm not like vehemently opposed to this. My my only concern about this is is that, I mean, it's essentially an extension of like a of, of an in law apartment. Um, in town, we 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 don't have any um, freestanding in law apartments in town. We they, there and there's an owner occupied um, provision of that. So we're we're by granting a variant going down the variance path here. We'd really be like extending. Um, I mean, I mean, we're letting somebody have a freestanding in-law apartment versus uh, the what everyone else has to do. Um, so I, I, I don't know if what John's getting at is like that we could put some type of, uh, I think that actual application was for two. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we thought that that was the, the better way to do it. And, and maybe to, um, and not to cut you off, Mr. Chairman, but just to anticipate your point, maybe you know, I think this might be a little bit distinguishable just because it, it's not like we're coming in and, and saying, hey, which is maybe not the best way, but hey, you know, we, we want to use this moving forward. So give us a variance. It's this has been used like this since 1996. You know, nobody has said anything, not that that's OK, but just they thought it was OK. And now they're finding out it's not OK, you know, 26, 27 years later. So you're probably a little bit protected as far as precedent setting. You know, if somebody were to say, well, you actually gave them an accessory apartment, a freestanding accessory apartment. So I think you're protected there. And then also putting a restriction on no more, you know, than, than two people living in there. I think that that gives you that belt and suspenders. I was just wondering how they, how the building inspector would have issued a permit back then without any any uh, variance or whatever on it. I mean, I don't think at this point that, you know, we should penalize uh, the owner that's uh, of it now because uh, it's it's been done. But uh, I think uh, uh, my question is, why was it done uh, before? And I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Unfortunately, were, were there were there um, were there renovations to it from the time it was an office to the time that it became a residence? No, Joel. No. There haven't been any. Been the same since the beginning. Nineteen ninety, yeah, ninety six. I think Andrew that Hilda wanted to say something, but she's muted. No, oh, I was just going to say that that's the way it was. The only renovations we did is paint it and carbon. Well, put in obviously new appliances, but it 
It was Lakeside Fuel. That's what it was used for previously? The previous Ooh. use was bought on Lakeside Fuel, which was bought out by Kimball and Carey and ultimately uh, Whiting Oil. And of course it had buried tanks we had to take out. Luckily they did not leak, but the fire chief and everybody was there when the tanks went out. Just as a um, sort of a speculative question, but what would it what would be the problem if this was not granted? What kind of hardship would that involve? So I think you probably have a a, a few fold. Um, first, you'd have to look at renovating the interior. So there's I think there's tenants there now, or, you know, there would be a stream of income from the tenants, you'd have to renovate the interior. And then if it was to be something that was allowed in a limited business, you know, kind of like what we heard from from, from the Pipschinskis, then you're talking about a business in that area, additional traffic, um, probably, you know, maybe having to pave the driveway, maybe having to do stormwater improvements. So it just, it escalates, it's just, it's apples and oranges, frankly. So I think you know, there there would be a significant cost to to changing it to something um, that was now code compliant with a for a commercial structure. Thank you. Sure. So, Andrew, should we put uh, a uh, it, uh, it have a uh, Number on the people that can uh, use this accessory? Yeah. Facility? Yeah, I think that would be the way to do it because I think, and well, one, because that's what they asked for, but also I think that protects, you know, if they sell the property, you know, somebody putting five students in there. Or I don't know how big the space is, but uh, if you, somebody could try to put a bunch of people in there at some point and cause a, a problem. Um, so I, I think that it would have. Uh, you know, that would make me feel more comfortable with it not being owner occupied like most um, accessory units are. And that is what they're asking for, right? You're asking for just two. Yep. Okay. Two occupants. We thought it was reasonable given, given everything that you were going to consider. Uh, is there anyone else? Um, I, I'm not sure who, there's just a number on the screen, 14136, but uh, I don't know if there's anyone else on the call who uh, wants to ask any questions or, or speak speak to this. John or Linda, you want to make a make a motion? I move that we grant the variance as requested with the um, with the uh, limitation of two occupants. I'll second that. Okay, Linda. Hi. Yes. Hi. John. Yes. I'm um, a yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, uh, that's uh, that concludes our our uh, our agenda. So we will we'll go ahead and uh, it's a lot easier when the river's not involved, I guess, huh? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so we will. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good Thank night. You. Good seeing you. Bye-bye.